right. Let's see where we were. Because we saved Professor Hal. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, I double checked that um, that achievement, mm -hmm. and it said like when it said like less than twenty percent of people did it. Mm -hmm. About half of them did it now, like to save him. So we are in doo -doo -doo, the quiet season, and we are going to be twelve years old. And Mars wants to talk. Let's see what a girl needs to say. And furthermore, your attitude towards your elders in general is entirely disrespectful. I mean, That's a nice way to start. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean, she is. I mean, he is. Okay, you find Utica delivering a scathing reprimand to Mars, who is doing her level best to look like she'd rather be anywhere else. You speak out of turn, you question the council's decisions. If you disagree with an order, you simply do not do it. I could go on. Do you need me to go on? Mars scowls. No, she replies. Utica clicks her tongue. Honestly, I thought better of you, Marsipan. Marsipan, she chastised. You have the sort of natural leadership ability I remember from when I was a girl many years ago. Mars doesn't roll her eyes, but you get the sense it's a close call. You need to set a better example for the other children, Yudicott continues. It's okay to have your own opinions, but you kids can't just do whatever you want. You have to follow the rules and respect your elders. I am setting a good example, Mars retorts, stomping her feet. <laughs> Bullying others. Hello? The only reason we're here is because a bunch of people knew living on Earth was nonsense and decided to do something different. Utica looks scandalized, but Mars just continues on. Maybe the kids should have more authority. We're the ones with the new ideas that'll take us to the future. So, should we say that she's right? Tell her not to speak for all of us or to stay quiet. I'm not here. Oh, oh, so if she's sitting here talking back to an old woman, you're not gonna, you're not here. I'm not here. So stay quiet and, and be respectful. I said, I'm not here. This is all that's basically, I mean. that's basically what you're saying. But let's see. We're going more into the... Orderly. So yeah, rebellion. Okay. Now we're back in the middle. See, Mars insists, everyone agrees with me. You might be on Vitruma, but your ancient old brain is still stuck on Earth. <sighs> she takes a deep breath for a moment and seems... Let me out! <laughs> and seems much older. Governor Uticott. We need higher walls and more aggressive farmland clearing, and we need it now. Are we here to stay on this planet, or will we just sit around until the jungle swallows us back up? Actually, she made a good point right there. Two years in a row, BS happened. I, I agree with her. I, I full-heartedly agree with her on that one. Utica's mouth opens and closes a few times. Then she puts her hand on her forehead. Both of you, get back to your duties. She sighs. Mars and Han, we will talk about this later in private. Should we spend some kudos? We got 141. Oh, okay. I guess I need But isn't it like the first slot? Uh, a plus one to yellow cards, to social cards. A guardian trial gives us five, plus five biology and a plus one straight to bonuses. Plus five to animals, to all, and plus one to all flushes. So it gives us a perk as well. Like this, this is technically in a way of a memory. Mm -hmm. And this- Like an additional card within your deck. I think so. Mm -hmm. Or don't you just get the additional card from the deck? But I honestly do not know. 
Because I see it's a three. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you always got neutral cards, it's either yeah. zero, one, two. Yeah. Some of them so are let's... three, four, or five. And then... What is, oh. Oh, that's how many there were. Oh, that's a gift. I, I thought it was an actual card. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold Mar- on. Wait, Mar- does Mars like it? Persuasion. Perception it is at 13. Damn it. Uh, let's see. <gasps> we can tell her about our day! Okay, yell at her. Oh, my dad's. She has two. F- oh, yeah, you did tell me she had two fathers. Two fathers. My dads are so, so uncool. Mars complains. Mars, do your homework. Mars, you should help out more. Mars, we're gonna cut your we're gonna cut off your allowance. She scoffs. As if, right? That money is mine. I earned it. With a toss of her hair over her shoulder, she Cough. seems with a toss. Cough. It says toss. Cough. Woman. Doing what? Do you even have to ask? My presence enlivens this dreary colony. I'm their beloved daughter. They owe me. Oh, I hate you right there. <laughs> All right, let's talk about our day. And we bored her. Mars is always talking about how she's bored and wishes there was more to do here. But the R.A. Okay, that is a typo. The R.A. Hundred reasons for Truma isn't boring. You try to list them all. There's all the cool plants and the new constellations to look at. And you just... And just yesterday, you watched a Dorb's moth squeeze through a crack in the wall. No animal should fit through. She listens politely. We got plus one in persuasion. Oh, that's right, because we had the buff. Mm-hmm. But starts yawning halfway through. Less bored is still bored when it comes to Mars and Ventruma. Okay, should we give her the cake? Yeah. And then we need persuasion for your grade again to a debate with her behind. All right. She takes it from you out, really looking at it. Thanks. Of course. Of course you do. Oh, wait. Our toughness. Oh, darn it. It's only at 18. We can't make him eat a bug. Oh. I didn't even realize there was something there. I just, I accidentally clicked something nature fact we have 16 in biology so we we're getting there uh dice wants to talk i'm surprised dice is this sitting there in the grass near the big gates that lead out the jungle he's staring at the nothingness and picking absentmindedly at the weeds he pretends not to notice you as you approach this is your this is your boy what should we tell him I think we should sit down with him. Do you? He's not much of a talker. <coughs> God damn it. Should I sit down with him? Okay. He, sit, he shifts uncomfortably as you sit, but doesn't say anything. You both just hang out saying and doing nothing. That was the right thing. You're starting to wonder if Dice will ever acknowledge you when he says, uh, I gotta go. As he starts down the well, hill, he pauses. This is a good spot. I'll probably come back tomorrow. I'm done. He's such a weird lad. He he just wanted he just wanted a little bit of kindness. Okay, we need bravery. Bravery. Oh, we're almost to that bravery. <sighs> it's time to learn some education. I don't think bravery came from education. Okay, studying together, we need reasoning twenty or greater, and reasoning is just as bad. So can't do nothing with her. What about you? We still can't do anything. Toughness 20 or greater. We still have to. (coughs) I'm dying. Breathe. (laughs) Let's see about Tammy. Can we do anything with Tammy? Yay. (laughs) Okay, because her empathy is high. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's knitting a long thing. Looks like a scarf, but she sees your confusion and giggles. Covering her mouth. I know we have nano printers, and I know it doesn't really get cold enough to need a scarf, but I just thought it's a good skill to practice. Okay, random act of kindness. Confidence. Plus uh, one empathy, and we gained a memory. 
I want to do something nice for Mars, Tammy says, fiddling with the hem of her dress. But I don't know what. She just nanopress whatever she needs. She snaps her fingers. I know. Why don't we ask Auntie Sedent for help? To help put us on a spa day for her. Auntie Sedent has a whole cabinet of nice smelling lotions, soaps, and scented candles. She lets you choose a few of each and reserves one of the private lounge anterooms for you. And we got a plus with her. Sure, Mars can buy her own lotions, but what she can't buy is the loving servitude of her friends. <laughs> I'm glad you did that because I want to say this bitch. <sighs> you just gotta see the weird shit going on. You helped Tammy primp and pamper Mars. She's surprised and a little humbled by the attention and gives you both a genuine hug and thanks. Tammy has good instincts. She always knows what people secretly need, and Mars needed to have something nice given to her instead of having to demand it. Oh, what a... <laughs> Smacked her in the head. Ow, I hurt my finger. What Ooh. The How did you... I smacked against it. Oh, me. my gosh. Okay, so... We need one more break. I would have, like... Oh, okay, so what were you saying that we need to go do? <clears throat> Get well, smart. first of all, I was slowly doing this. I'm like, if I was, you know, right now, I would have bop her in the head, like, stop it. Okay. Okay, what was the thing that we needed? Uh, uh, to reasoning do something or, with, or um, toughness or bravery? Bravery. We would okay, need we'd bravery. Okay, probably, we'd probably go to sports school. Sports Oh, Relax on the Walls is here now. Hmm. And it's a plus one with dice. Oh, wait, let me see. 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 Okay, we get two, plus two brain. I'm trying to see rolls. Okay, okay, okay. Forget one. Oh, that's another type of thing. Okay. Yeah. So we just hang out with... Dice. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so we can ball. do sports ball, and then we can make him eat the bug. You have to sweep the sports ball pitch every day. Otherwise, you'd be playing in a couple inches of spark snow and you wouldn't be able to see the lines of the pitch. It adds about half an hour to your practices every day, but it's worth it. Okay. Zero, zero, two, two, five. Oh. 21. 21. I mean, like, I literally just made it 21. So we got plus three bravery, plus two toughness because we're on heroic stats right now, mm -hmm. and seven stress. Mm. So, yes, we have enough to make him eat. And abuse him. That's all I hear. And we have some toughness so we can play with... Uh-oh. All I have is the abuse. Uh-oh, we have him. We are dreams again. You've been having weird dreams as usual. They seem to get worse around Glow. You wake from a dream that has tears drying on your face. You can't remember why. You're just terrified. Uh oh, someone's gonna die again, but we don't know who. But remember the location. Remember because we woke up from a strange dream but it didn't tell us anything and then Tammy died. But what, what location were we when Tammy died? The creche. So, that so means somebody's going to die here. over here. Dice. Because Dice was here. Dice is usually here. Whatever. It felt real, though, that the moment you just lie in bed with your eyes closed and try to calm your breathing, you literally rub your eyes and... Oh, it's my birthday! <laughs> literally. Oh, it's your birthday. Your dad leaps onto your bed and gives you a big cuddle. Happy birthday, little tomato head. Twelve years old. Wow. Can you believe it? I run away from the family. No, your mom answers for you, laughing as she hands you your presents. That was just yesterday. Antecedent was showing me how to change your diaper. Because it's your birthday, your parents have brought in food from the canteen so you can all eat together on your bed. As you stuff your face with savory tofu chunks, you open your presents. God Which damn, one you is your it. favorite? A bouquet of exotic flowers. This is a perk. That one's a perk, and it's the... Creepy looking, what the fuck that is? It was the manticore that attacked a Uncle baby Tony. Manticore? No, it's a toy one. I'm done. And a uh, holophone from my best Plus friend. One. Plus one to speech cards. Don't you have a lot of speech cards? 
Yes, but here's the thing: I can buy that one. Are I they actually gonna show? Did they show that in there? Too? Yes, I can literally so buy saw, this one. No, from, so, so you so you saw this one that says plus one to speech bubbles. Yes, that was in the that was in the shop. I thought that was biology. One was strength. That's what I remember. I remember one was is, biology, that is, one was uh, uh, strength, but I don't remember the third one. So we can get the flower. This is a strength one. Mm-hmm. No, but I'm talking and about from the shop. I remember the, it's from the it, shop. I remember the holophoner. The holophoner was there. Okay. Yeah. So that'd be a good one to have for for having a plus one thing. So like, I'll take that. I taught the mana printer the pattern based off of pictures from Expeditions. Your dad says watching you play with it. It's called a, a Spectraraptor, he continues. See? It looks like it's wearing glasses on top of its five eyes. They say it's because its lenses are outside of its eyeballs. Isn't that wild? Nothing like that on Earth. Your dad clears away the wrapping paper and dishes from breakfast. Your mom folds her hands on the table and gives you a serious look. Uh-oh. So, she says, we've been here two years now. I know your dad and I always say you're in charge of your own schedule, but we've been keeping an eye on you. A loving eye, your dad interjects, stuffing wrapping paper into the recycler pickup bin. A trusting, gentle eye. Antecedent says you're, you've been great help around the quarters, your mom continues. That's good. She might not have the most glamorous job, but she is one of the most important people in the colony. She pats your head. It's important to respect the people who raised you. Not just us, you know. Your dad joins in again. So it's time to start thinking about how you're going to contribute to the colony when you're older. The look on your face, at the look on your face, he laughs. Don't worry, we're not going to make you get a job right now we're just asking what would you like to be when you grow up why is this a future endeavor at the oh no listen is- a farmer like you two a teacher like professor Howe, a parent with like 10 kids <laughs> captain of the sports ball team a famous idol a monster hunter governor of Ventruma. do i have to decide right now huh five Five, 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 five. We got no reasoning. Oh, we have four. four. We were one off. Can we, can we click? Do I have to decide right now? <sighs> you feel overwhelmed by the decision. Of course not, sweetie. Your dad says hugging you. It's okay not to know yet. And it's okay to change your mind later. We didn't know what we wanted to be some off war farmers when we were 12. Of course. Sometimes you just figure it out as you go. Well, your mom starts to get up. I'm sure your friends all want to wish you a happy birthday. She stops and snaps her fingers. Oh, you might not have to consider a career as a depot clerk, but Al and Bernie mentioned their daughter Mars is working there and she needs help. Now that people can freely order order luxuries, it's pretty busy there. Sure beat shoveling dirt, your dad laughs. If you don't take that job, you tell Mars I'll be right there. Your mom rolls her eyes and smiles. Mid quiet and Tam Tam want to talk. She beams when she sees you. There's like there's nothing better in the world than the side of your face. Happy birthday, Solana, she exclaims. She comes in for her annual birthday hug throwing her arms around you and giving you a great big squeeze. Here, I got you this. Mm. Slap you on the head and make you stop More cake! (sighs) Slap you on the goddamn head just to make you stop thinking about 10 kids. Uh, I will still say I would share it with you because that gives you friendship with her. Okay. Uh, those are parentals. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him the cake because he likes food. That is indeed true. What is that? Plus, it gives plus two to a card. Wow, Solana! This is my favorite thing in the whole planet. And I right. lost some stress. 
two friendship and two. Friendship. So we got I got four, four friendships. Just show me him food. I think you'd be the fastest dating sim person to go. To. Just keep <laughs> shoving cake in his mouth. He makes crap. And the, thing, no. and the thing is, you can go to the cooler shop, buy all the cake, keep shoving him in his mouth. Yep. He makes grabby hands at the cake and takes a big huff of the pleasant sugary smell as his his eyes slip close in sheer press pleasure. Wow, Solana, he breathes. You're really the best of the best. Here, you have a piece too. Let the icing melt in your mouth and let all your worries melt away. You oh. won't be a thick dude when you're older. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> oh, now he wants to talk. Hold this to your head now, my darling. You hear as you enter the garden looking for cow. It'll help with the swelling. <gasps> That's the Mimas? Cal is sitting with his mother, Auntie Tira. Oh, they, oh, they call her Auntie Tira, even that's his mother. Who okay. kneels beside him, holding a pack of ice to his head. Cal's eyes are a little puffy. He rubs them and sniffs as you approach. Hello, Solana. Tira greets you with a kind smile. Don't worry. What is his name? What is his name? <laughs> Raquel Citrus. Wait, what? Hold okay, on. hold I on, can't God. Even I can't even. That. I can't even read. Hello, Solana. Tira greets you with a kind smile. Don't worry. Abomination. Recalcitrance. You're just you tumble off. What kind of recalcitrance? <laughs> what is the definition of that? What is the definition? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that a bit Definition. God damn, that's an actual word. That's a actual guy. A defiant of the of authority or restraint. Obstinately defiant of authority. Difficult to manage or operate. Not responsible. That not responsive to treatment. Yeah, that's him. Wow. They use some fancy, fancy words. God damn fancy words. Mom! Cal complains. It wasn't that bad. You owe me yes. all yes. <laughs> you go yes. Yes. I'm okay, Cal reassures. I just bonked my head a little. Mom always know how to make it better, he says with a boyish smile. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> Even if I'm old enough to take care of myself. My brave boy, Tira says, stroking his hair. Thanks for humoring me. She looks over to you. Don't let him show off for you, Solana. Ground-based feats of bravery only for the rest of the day. Cal whines and wrinkles his nose. Yes! Tira laughs and wraps him in a big motherly hug, rocking him back and forth. Despite his pro protest, Cal's eyes close in happiness. He really loves his mom. And we got a memory card. Cal's strength. Oh, that's nice. Let's go buy you some cake, boy. Get in there. Supply Depot. See? Mm. Oh, now it's a hundred. I told you. We gotta, could have got a free card. I'm done. She's getting kicked so she can shove it in her mouth. He gonna be a bo big boy when we done. I'm done. And then you'll be like, how long your hair cow got this? We're looking at you. Hey, look. We're making them plump. Oh, oh too soon to give another gift. Dang. I see even the game says stop it. <laughs> even the game Hold says on. stop it. I step cautiously through the calling gates. Solana, how's it going, little partner? Chief Surveyor partner. Utopia steps casually out to bar your way while making it look accidental. Oh, so is she the, the new captain? Yep. Oh, wow. Whoa there. Didn't know if you were ready to head out and join the surveyors just yet. Why don't you skedaddle and stick the sports ball inside the walls? And we're actually tough and brave enough to do that. To go with them. But first we're going to make him eat this bug. I had a man to shove dirt in his mouth. Dice almost completely ignores you in favor of playing a, hollow, a game on his hollow pan. Just one, he mutters, then curses and stomps his Cusses. feet. It doesn't matter. He's saying naughty words. Mm. 
and stomps his feet as the game lets out a cheery whistle of defeat. Stupid game, he hisses. Looks like he'd throw the game away if it wasn't literally attached to his hand. I dare you to eat this worm. Oh yeah? Dice counters? Well, I double dare you to eat this worm. You can't just turn down a double dare. You're no meek little hop eye. Oh. Slimy, okay. unsatisfying. There was a Lion King reference. Oh, <laughs> very, very gross. Dice eat his like a noodle, slurping it up and wrinkling his nose as it wriggles down. Yuck, he says, swallowing it whole, then shows you his empty mouth. You should have known better than to dare a person who fears nothing. Right. Look at that not good, because that's his trait. His, his fear of nothing. I fear no man, but that, that scares me. You know what? Hell yeah, brother. I'm going outside. I'm tough. Well, I'll be, Utopia draws, grappling you playfully. You ain't lying, kid. You got grit. Listen, she tells you, I'll speak to your parents. You're still a bit young, but I wager next year you can join the junior survey team, all right? Just Probably hold on tight until then. There. Sorry, Sprout. Dejected, you drag your feet as you walk back through the gates to safety. Well, there's still Dice's secret way out through the drain. If the adults won't let you visit the Valley of Vertigo, of Vertigo <laughs> uh, she, she, or the she, she Subaqueous fucking, Swamp, she had a stroke. <laughs> on the other cool places the surveyors get to go, you can still sneak out and. I was supposed to be the one with the stroke. She had a freaking stroke. Oh my god, tears. I'm tears. sneaking out. I'm out, bitch. <laughs> We're gonna learn some things. Are you sure? Yes. Speaking of this, you might have to cut this out. So, back to this. Uh, farmland spilled on the outsides. So let's try to plant something. I'm just a kid playing around, but it gave me a bit of brains. Calling the outskirts. But interesting bugs and other treasure for those willing to put their hands down the right holes. Are you? Let's peek in that hole. Perception 20 or greater. Looks dark. Should I put my hand in it or should I just go nope? I looked inside of a hole. Should I look? Can I put my hand in it or should I not? Look, you can't even click look closer. Do you want to lose your hand? All right, fine. I'll be, I'll be good. Let's see if we can go further. Ooh, I can pick that up. Another mushroom sticker. Yep. Harvest is sturdy. Oh, look, it's our little friend. Popeye's playing in a clearing. They let you get pretty close to watch them chitter to each other and rub noses. They're all friends, just like people, but they hop away if you get too close. Walk through their territory. All right. One, two, and two. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get I mean, I want to go ahead and use those because those two fours will be. Some more animals. They're wary at first, but you crouch down and copy their cute little squeaky noise. You bounce towards them, and amazingly, they don't hop away. You play with the hop eyes for a few minutes before moving on. Cute little guys. Time passes. I gotta go home soon? I mean, yeah, it's gonna be. 
Look at it. Look at your stress. Darn you. I have to stay on the... I didn't... I did not do that. Do what? Do what? I didn't I didn't click for him for her for them to move like that. Fine. I'll go home since you told me to go home. Let's go home. And then the next one I'll I'll sit with dice. Quiet. Honestly, I think Tang might like the log. Very seriously concerning log piece of paper. One of the lab assistants told me that it's impossible to fold a piece of paper in half more than seven times. She says, This is a myth. You can actually fold a piece of paper in half 12 times. Tang frowns. I cannot abide those nominally more intelligent than I am passing on hearsay and urban legends as facts. It is the duty of all scientists to question what is held up as truth. Here, have a log. Uh, she didn't care for it, but I get a bit of friendship with her. She wants to talk. Yep. Tanger is now watching a construction crew build scaffolding for the new engineering pavilion. They're using mush wood, which is so light that one person can easily lift a 10 meter long pole and stack it into place. She points towards them. Human beings are so great, don't you think? Before we landed, this was all just dirty jungle. Now it's a civilization. And I think we, we basically like sat on a nesting area for most of these animals. Yeah, it's from no wonder they probably keep attacking. Yeah. I've been learning about adaptability in writing and biology class. The books say that what sets us apart from the animals, like we don't need fur because we can make warm clothes, and if it's too hot, we can make air conditioners and set instead. I mean, yeah, and we can also sweat. Tang nods vigorously. Yes, also that. I read that not many animals sweat except humans. And it makes us naturally good at hot places. It's like we were made to be explorers. Together you watch the foreman as the foreman puts blueprints for the scaffolding into the floating screen of her hollow palm and raises it to the scaffolding to check their progress. I like to see an alien do that. Tang says primely. You are the aliens! Humans look defenseless and weak, but we're the strongest species in the galaxy. Who else can literally bend reality to their whim? Not a stupid alien, that's for sure. You, you, you little, you little too high up there. You gonna get humbled so bad. She puts one finger to her chin. I'm living proof that humanity is greater than our biology, she says. All of us are, really, with our genetic enhancements. We're the next step in humanity's evolution, from great ape to galactic super species. And people are cocky about their race. Yes. Until that usually leads until, to a really bad until downfall. So, uh, uh, until something come out of nowhere, just slaps you off the existence. And you be like, oh my god, I remember that time when you were talking about you were a super species, but you're now you're amputated dirt. with an arm. Okay, so wasn't it over at sports ball that we could sit with dice? Yes. Yep, relax in the walls. After the first attack on the colony, they added lookout towers to the walls. Now you have a place to hang out if you don't feel like working. And because it's all the way up here, no adults are going to come and ask you to run away to run any errands for them. On rainy days, you take shelter under the pavilions and listen to the pitter patter of warm raindrops on the grass roof. You can do whatever you want. Ah, oh, this is the life. It's a place to slack off, a place to keep watch, or a place to study. So slacking off, watch, or study. We too stupid. We never been going to school for quite a while. <laughs> study. Plus one to reasoning. <laughs> See what I say. You pack your hollow holoculars. Excuse me. You speak English? Right here. Okay. The wall is a great vantage. 
great vantage point to examine the wild jungle outside the colony. Your independent study even counts towards class credits while actually having to be in class. Hey, Solana. Dice pops his head up a nearby ladder and looks surprised to see someone else here. Do you mind if I sit here too? Heck yeah, come sit by me. Yeah. The two of you dangle your feet off the side and watch the valley below. Dice shovels a little uncomfortably and doesn't say much. You wonder if this was his private spot to be alone before you discovered it. No, because these two are fairly good cards right now. I'm not forgetting none of them. Early pollen. Let's see. Oh yeah, the flowers are in bloom. Those two sweethearts are next to each other. Should we go to school? Yeah, yeah, yeah we do them. Okay. Oh, another egg. Alright, let's go to school. <gasps> we could go engineering classes. Does that make our brain bigger? We need a recent five or greater for that. Mm -hmm. So let's see what's going on in here. Using Congruence's HoloNet scheduling system is almost a test of its own. You feel like a hacker at navigating the confusing interface, but manage to add your name to the list of drop-in students. You're now eligible. Oh, so we get engineering or organizing. Okay. To join Tangent and some of the older students in engineering class. Mm. Okay. Let's go back in. Okay, so it's going to be engineering, reasoning, and friendship with tangent. It's still plus 15 stress no matter what we do, so let's see engineering. Professor Hal rubs his hands together, not his neck, as he waits for the class to settle down. He's in a great mood. This must be his favorite subject to teach. If biology and chemistry are the wet sciences, the engineering must be a dry one. But believe me, this class definitely won't be dry. He winks. It's weird. We're also learning math, physics, computing, robotics, architecture, and astronomy. I took physics. You don't ever want to go that far in math. Believe me, that stuff's confusing. I somehow made it out with an A, but... Tangent raises her hand. Will we also learn about nuclear engineering? She asks. You just want to explode nonsense. Professor Hal nods. Yes, at a beginner level. We'll have an overview of atomic theory and then take a field trip to the engine rooms to learn how our ship's nuclear reactor works to power the colony. Uh, okay, death. I pick death. That's why I'm hearing. All I hear is like, I pick death. Solana, can you come see me in class? Professor Hal pulls you aside in the hall. Congruence sliding along all beside him. You follow- I pick death, that's all I heard. You follow him cautiously. Don't worry, he smiles, you're not in trouble. Far from it, in fact. He grabs your hand and shakes it firmly. I never thanked you for, well, saving my life. Plus one skill on a mental challenge win. See, I knew he was going to talk about talk about us saving his behind. Professor Hal and I are very grateful for your bravery, Congruence says. Though you should have been the in the creech. This just this once, it's a good it is good you disobey orders. I cannot speak. And there's nothing new. <sighs> but no. Is Hal and Congruence a thing or something? Hmm? Do he have a hollow wife or something? Honestly, I was wondering where is her true existence? Oh, it was nothing. Or Will maybe, there be? Or maybe it could be that his wife would do something Ooh, to connect her body into the net. Internet. Singularity. Will there be a reward? Did they find the thing that attacked you? Honestly, I'm more curious yeah, about that, this. How looks unsure. No, but congruence filled the engineering win with, with Sir Phil so fural fluoride for a few days fumigated the place hopefully that got it whatever it was oh yeah that's that anything with sulfur is gonna kill 
Hell Winks, good thing you were helping me in the classroom when the attack started, right? He laughs and leans back against his desk, inadvertently sitting on something at, that pops and gives off a shower of acrid smelling sparks. Whoops, he says, leaning away from his desk. Danger lurks everywhere. Solana, keep your head on the swivel. All right, let's... Okay. Let's see. Two, three, four, five. We get five kudos. Here, Dad comes back from work one day looking seriously under the weather. He's pale, with deep circles under his eyes, and keeps sneezing. It's fine, he insists. It's all just this pollen in the air. It's gunking up the old air tubes. Do you remember hay fever, Flulu? We always got it back on Earth, too. Is he sick? Your mom frowns and crosses his arms, her arms. We did, she agrees. So why isn't it bothering me? He's allergic to the planet. You're a lot tougher than me, sweet pea, your dad says, and your mom rolls her eyes. I'm sure I just have to get used to it like you did, he continues. Maybe I'll go for a stroll outside. The gates later. Really get a good lung full of the stuff. I'll feel bad for a few weeks after. I think we need to save dad. Your mom raises an eyebrow. Brow. Outside the gates, you, your dad shrugs, then he falls into a fit of sneezing and can't answer. Your mom directs him to go lie down on the bed. You need rest, not machismo, she scolds him. I don't have ma- uh. <laughs> He sneezes, a macho bone in my body, foo-foo. And I have to fertilize the corn and the pixie beans next week. Uh-huh, your mom grunts. Your dad pulls a handkerchief from his pocket and sneezes into it a few times. Big, yelling, honk sneezes that echo through the whole quarters. He pulls it away from his face and you can tell that something's wrong. Huh, your dad says weakly, holding the handkerchief away from his face. A bright fuchsia pink and glittering in the light. That's weird. His eyes roll into the back of his head, his knees buckle, and your mom yells for you to call instant. Bro, this man is allergic to goddamn He's life. allergic to the life. Chief Engineer Instant takes your dad's vials and gives him a cursory look over, but seems satisfied with what she sees while having to do a thorough examination. The explorers have called, start calling this the shimmer, she says, shining a light down your dad's throat. He's looking a little better, but not much. It's an airborne environmental toxin, likely in the pollen fog. Will he be okay? It doesn't seem to cause long-term damage to the body, Instance explains. She gestures in the air, making notes on her hollow eye that only she can see. I've been tracking his effects for three seasons now. The toxin is flushed out of the body after three to five days, and it's not contagious. She looks down at your father. What that means for you, geranium since you are particularly susceptible to toxin, you should be taking better pains to avoid exposure. If you must go outside during pollen, use a respirator. Your dad smiles weakly. You got it, boss, <laughs> he says. Your mom smiles and puts her hand over his. As your literal boss, I'm ordering you not to come to work for the rest of the week, she says. You're on strict bed rest. So does that mean we taking dad work? She leans and to touch her forehead to his. They stay like that, smiling with relief. Even after one day of bed rest, your dad is looking a lot better. He's clearly anxious to get back out into the fields. You're gonna love this new crop, Solana. It's called Pixie Bean, and they glow in the dark. He's already pulling on his boots. The fields look so beautiful at night. I'm happy that we finally got found something that could actually grow here that isn't soy, soy, and more soy. I'm happy soy. too, but you sit your behind down, Dad. Soy, 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 soy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next soy. month, which one, Tang? Your hollow palm pulses with a message from Tang. Hey, Solana, if you're not uh, occupied, I could ask. Could I ask for your assistance in the lab? Thank you in advance. Tangent. Typical Tang, but her asking for help is something so rare that you can't help but head over right away. 
You find her hunched over a spectrometer taking notes on her hollow screen. Oh, you're here, she says, blinking rapidly. She looks like she's been awake for days. Wrinkled, a little shiny, with the wild-eyed look of someone who needs a cup of blep tea. Okay. I came as soon as I could. I'm researching the shimmer, the respiratory illness some people report during pollen, she says. I'm loath to admit it, but I need your assistance. I think that was supposed to say I loathe. She takes four vitals with swabs inside and puts them in your hands. I need recent saliva samples from both you and your father, she says. There must be a reason why he's so susceptible to the shimmer and you're not. You share half of your genetic code with him. There must be some marker we can compare the two samples. Then, she continues pulling another vial from the rack of test tubes. Administer this to yourselves, wait three days, and take samples again. The test should be able to determine if anything in your body chemistry has changed. Tang looks at you very seriously, cutting through her bleary expression. There's something going on here, she whispers. Something really, really big. I've begun to realize this is, this is about more than just curing a disease. She squeezes your hand so hard it almost hurts, unlocking the secrets of the shimmer, who it affects and why. It could lead to a greater understanding of all life on Vitruma and knowledge. Knowledge is more than power, Solana. It's control. I'm starting to see why she and Dice started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You okay? You seem unhinged. You all right, girl? I don't believe her in a second. Tang blinks again. I'm perfectly fine, she says dismissively. This is a face of complete concentration and focus. I'm in the zone, Solana. She been sniffing some hallucinating shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> she been sniffing some goddamn shrooms, okay? She been sniffing I mean, I'll do it because I want to save Dad, but oh my god. Plus one on Shimmer Cure and plus one on Helping Tangent. Thank you, she says. I've been researching so hard, I think my eyes are going to fall out of my head. And for what? Well, for the end of a debilitating disease is a pretty good reason, but Tang just shakes her head at herself before you can answer. We're at a disadvantage here, she mutters. We're fighting blind. We need to understand this planet if we're going to get it under control. And this is how we destroy ourselves. That's not hanging out. I know. And then Tammy wants to talk. Tammy's crying and trying to hide it, wiping her eyes and blowing snot into her sleeve. Why is she crying this time? Go talk to her. I'm asking. I, she hiccups. I watched that scary movie last night in the lounge. You remember it. It's Mothra vs. Godzilla, the 2085 remake. <sighs> Tammy. <sighs> I think Barney would be too scary for her. She's too delicate. She has to stay with baby movies. She's not allowed to look at anything scarier I than the land before time. I, I can't, bro. I can't. Well, sniffling. I had a bad dream where the monsters were knocking at my bedroom window. They were trying to get in. Now I can't stop thinking about it. I miss being in space. It was so much safer there. <laughs> What do you mean safer, <laughs> bitch? You can die from asteroids, aliens, wormholes, unexpected <laughs> discoveries. You don't even understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> sniffing shrooms. Yo, you've been, you know, you've been, no, you haven't. There's no way you've been sniffing shrooms. You've been sniffing too much soybeans. <laughs> Space was more dangerous. The soldiers will keep us safe or Mothra and Godzilla aren't real. Well, then again, we don't know what's on this planet, so... Soldiers will keep us safe. Yeah. I hope so, she sniffs. But I can hear the monsters at night. Sometimes. Real ones. Out in the jungle. I can hear them trying to get in. They're scary. You both look towards the walls. She does have those big ears. Maybe she can really hear creatures gathering in the jungle. Scratching at the walls. Looking for weak points. The thought gives you shivers. I'm gonna go outside and play. 
Really? Go talk to Dice. Dice doesn't have anything to say. He doesn't? Mm-mm. That's what I asked. Yeah, see? He's right here. Well, um, what about... <laughs> he likes the egg, right? He didn't like the egg. He didn't? Okay, let's see about our friend's Dice. He doesn't like cake. Yeah, so he... We don't I know remember, his birthday. I remember he picked up the egg before. We gave him the egg before. All right, let's see. Yeah. Uh, thank you. He, he says, clearly picture. unsure about what how to react. I'll uh, find something to do with it. Oh, yeah, we can give another cake to the boy. Yes, show him his mouth with cake. Here, have another cake. Yep. Plus two, plus stress. two. Freeze my stress. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to go play outside. I'm done. I fed the children. I'm done. I'm going to go outside. And I got nowhere to hide. I'm done. What is that? Yeah, pick that up. Another one. Ooh, medicinal roots. So we can make some medicine. A large woolly blue creature floating here, a meter off the ground. It seems upside down. Oh, it is upside down. Yeah. Which They're is causing some face. distress. Oh. No. It's a float cow. Figure out what's wrong, milk it, or pop it. Leave it. We don't know what to do with that thing. Really? We can't. We can't. So we have to make a decision if we want to keep going. No, leave it. I can't leave it. I can't keep going. That's fine. He don't go inside. Don't go. Don't go. Outside. All right, I'm popping him. Vegan teacher can be mad at me. You pop her dorsal flare and let the liquid drain out. She'll never be able to flip over. She struggles and screams as you open your utility knife and jab it into her bladder immediately you're drenched by a hot explosion of what you hope is milk it spirals away like Look a freaking balloon congratulations you caused stress and destroyed a creature i'm not happy that i destroyed the creature i wanted hey, you to get by went, you could have you could have not do it and here's the thing dice has something to say the second sun is beginning to set and you're planning your route back to the gates when you spot Dice in the distance. He waves you over. Hi, Solana, he says gloomily. I wish we didn't have to go home. I wish you could stay here forever. Sure, me too. What if, he begins, what if we didn't go home? Today, I mean, it, what if you stayed out and camped overnight? I brought a tent just in case and a, perimer and a perimeter sensor, and I found a spot right near the deep hill that looks safe. Would you like to spend a night with Dice? I'm not here. You already did a poo poo decision when I said no. Hey, so it's your turn. You I wanna said hang out no, with Dice? No, I already did my decision on the last one. I said no, you're like hell no. Nah, Alright. We're camping out with Dice. Dice sets up the tent while you place While the you get post. obliterated by Fulu, the queen of death, the Amazon queen. Fulu gonna whoop my ass, but hey, it's gonna be worth it. Dice sets up the tent while you place perimeter posts around the edge of the clearing. If anything trips this invisible wall around your cap site, at least you'll know about it. Without even saying goodnight, Dice crawls into the tent, takes off his jacket, and stuffs it behind his head. He curls up in a big ball facing the wall. He falls asleep almost immediately. Holy crap, this dude is quick. You crawl beside him and pull a thermal blanket over yourself. You're exhausted from a long day of hiking in the jungle, so despite the excitement of being out in the wild at night, you quickly fall asleep as well. You both wake up to blaring an alarm and bright lights fill in the campsite. It's the perimeter alert. Something must have triggered it. Dice bolts upright and looks at you with wide eyes. Should we go and check it? Okay, so it's easy. Work up the courage. Let's do this. We got three rounds. Zero. One. Three 
calling baby giggles I don't care I'm putting in Tammy asking an adult and eating a carnivore plus 21 our bravery is going through the roof though let's get out there with empathy both carefully open the door peek out through a crack nothing wherever it was the lights and noise must have scared it off the sun is almost up and we got another card we got a memory with him and you are definitely not getting back to sleep after that so you two eat soy rations and sit quietly and watch the sunrise or you get obliterated by your parents yep so when the surveyors open the gates and start prepping for the day you pack up your gear and go home you expect the worst but no one even knows you were gone you left the privacy curtain on your bed closed and your parents must have come home late and left early thinking you were asleep the whole time you're lucky but it also makes you feel a little sad yeah because you was too busy yeah i mean that that would make me feel sad that they didn't even notice i was gone Yeah, that kind of hurts. Yeah, man, that's what you get. Oh, Dice wants to talk. All right, Dice, what you got? You slip through the colony gates, feeling the breeze from the mushroom forest ruffle your hair. You look around for Dice, but he's nowhere to be seen. Maybe he went to class today? Probably not. You're about to return to the colony. You hear what sounds like crying coming from one of the expedition vehicles. You pull back the tarp that keeps from keeps it from being blanketed with fungal spores and see Dice curled up in a cabin in the cabin. He wipes his tears away. Go away, he mutters. Don't are you okay? I'm fine, Dice sniffles. Just leave me alone. Uh okay, we got a persuasion ten a greater. This is a great hiding spot. I'm coming in. You pull back the tarp and slide into the cabin of the vehicle. Dice continues to cry, but softer now, as if he's trying to stop but can't quite manage it. His lower lip trembles. You're lucky you have a family who cares about you, he sniffles. My mom is gone, and my sister thinks I'm stupid. I don't think you're stupid, you're just very eccentric. Dice is quiet for a long time, almost long enough that you begin to consider actually leaving him alone. Just before you do, he speaks. I'm never going back to class, he says. I hate being around other people and I hate doing schoolwork. And I double hate it when the teacher asks me questions. I'm not Tang. I don't know stuff like she does. Dice kicks the console of the vehicle a, a few times. Bang, bang, bang. Then bursts out in tears again, pulling at his hair. I'm just dumb, okay? People ask me questions and I freeze up and I say something stupid that everyone laughs at me. Even Tang. Tang laughs the hardest, he sobs. She's embarrassed by me. I know she is. Today she just told me people would like me more if I stopped being so sensitive and immature. So now we know why he doesn't talk to people. We need folks who use their hearts too. Oops. What she did? I, I was trying to... I was trying to comfort him. It's like, I wasn't going to write Tang is right. Dice turns away. See, even you think I don't use my brain. Everyone thinks Tang is better than me. He wraps his arms around me, uh, around his legs, and hides his face in his knees. I hate her, he mutters. Everyone thinks she's so smart, but she's just a big meanie. I hate everyone here. I hate being here. I just want to be left alone. What could you do? You press button, you should have pressed. Well, I'm sorry. I was trying to be a good friend. Yeah, you, you were part. You were paying attention. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't wrap my arms around him and give him a big ass hug. I mean, you didn't know. You didn't even read the choice prompts properly. It was. It was. Here's what it was. Tang was right, and people. We need people with kind hearts too. That was the prompts. So it was a damned if I do, damned if I don't. 
I am not restarting that. <laughs> but I know now we, we need to stay with Dice or Dice is going to do something to Dice that we shouldn't have Dice do. <laughs> uh, let's train with Anemone. Telling a violent tale. On your way to the sports ball pitch, Anemone shares the story about the time her brother Calm once spiked the ball so hard he broke Utopia's nose. Back when they used to play sports ball, she describes it in gory detail. I'm done. But don't go easy on me, she exclaims. That's why we have med beds, right? Plus, I might get a cool scar. She thumbs a blue scaled scar on her jaw, right under her ear. So these are scars? What the heck? Okay, what you want to talk about? So then I trapped it in my room, Anemone says, telling you about all about the bug she saw in her quarters. Its wings were as big as my hand and had feelers like, whoa! And it was bouncing all over the place like boing, boing, boing. She gestures excitedly, swinging her arms over her head. The bugs, they're so big and they're everywhere. I was going to give it to Tang, she says. She loves gross bug stuff. So we need to give her bugs. But she said I should just let go because if it stung me, I might get weird mutant powers. I mean, other than the one I already have. And if I wanted to see if I got more mutant powers, so I just started jumping around off higher and higher things until I was jumping off the back of the ship. And then I got in so much trouble. But it wasn't even that high. She stops in her tracks. Hold on, she says, stooping to rub irritably at her knees for probably the hundredth time in the past five minutes. Oh, I'm going to die. I busted up my knees and it's so itchy when my scales grow in. Annie, don't pick at it. Chief Stewart Antecedent's voice rings out across the garrison yard. Pleasant but firm. It instantly transports you back to being in the ship creche, tugging on her skirts and calling her auntie. Anemone jumps and stands up straight, her hands flying to her sides. But mom, she whines, digging her fingers into her knees as Auntie Seaton approaches you both. It's so scratch-tastically itchy. I, I demand we shut down this recording. I need to run away. Curly fries and some weird-ass sniffing mushrooms. I know lovely Auntie Seaton soothes her, patting her patting down her riotous red hair, but the more you pick at it, the thicker your scales are going to grow in. And then they tucks her hands under her armpits, keeping from scratching. What if I want to have cool scales? She pouts. Uh, a tea seated smiles indulgently. At this rate, you're going. I'm sure you'll be covered in them before you know it. No need to rush. And then they skin is dotted with patches of protective blue-green scales that grow in wherever she gets a cut or scrape. She rubs the patch on her jaw indignantly. The one she got when she ran headfirst into the food synthesizer back on the ship? So we know her augment. For defense, I'm guessing. Oh, hold on. Armor scaled skin. This I'm saying defense. And T.C. opens her satchel and pulls out a bundle of clothes. The queue for the nanoprinter is over a week long, so I patched her pants with scraps from your brother's clothing. Please try not to put any more holes in them. Or yourself, okay? No. She hands the clothes to Anemone and kisses her on her forehead. Anemone sticks out her tongue and gags. Yuck. Anemone evaluates her clothes as her mom walks away. Galactic, she breathes as she runs her fingers over the odd colored patches. Then right there in the middle of the yard, she unashamedly squirms out of her pants and pulls on the new ones. Ah, I look like a fighter jet from the hollows. She exclaims, showing off her new pants. Like when they stencil your kill count on your plane? <laughs> or like a really cool scar. And then they grins. Yeah, you get it. My pants are scarred, just like me. <laughs> yeah, we have idiots. Oh, hey, Solana, Mars says, breezing past you. I'm sorry, I can't talk now. I'm on my way to work in command. She stops when you don't sound amazed enough. You know, the, 
supply depot she clarified it's the most important job in the whole colony anything that gets made here goes through me first ah shut up you fucking slap your head i have to have less than 20 rebellion but i'm still roughly in the middle at a 50 50. mars smug smile gets somehow even more smug plus I get the first pick of all the best stuff. You know what? Hmm. Friendship with Mars Tender Greer. I can ask if I can work with her. I mean, yeah, I'm mean, she's the best friend. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Mars hems and haws. I suppose it is a lot of work to do alone. And I do like you. We should stick together. I'm done. Let me out. Let me smack her in the head with a shoe. Whatever Mars does to pull a minister seeks strings works because an hour later you get a message from them on your holophone. They're dubious that you'll be able to rise to the responsibilities of the role, but that's nothing new. Seek is dubious about everyone and everything, but they agree Mars would be more efficient if she had someone else to keep an eye on her. <laughs> okay, we got up. We basically got a promotion. All right, so what should what should we do today? Should we go to school? Should we help Tammy out? Should we help out our folks? Okay, how about we go see father? Okay. That, that, I'm sorry, That what the hell was that? Yeah, I guess it's good, Mike. Yeah, I would need animal handling. So he's back to normal? Grade. Yeah. Okay, because it was like at that, that moment when he was sus as hell. Okay, so what shall we Saucy do? Blocker. It's your turn. <laughs> Don't you ever do that in my Christian Minecraft server. <laughs> ah, I'm done. Sussy Baka. Hey, man. Just like you had a stroke, I deserve my moment. Okay, so I guess the, the edumacation. Edumacation? Because we're too stupid. It's amazing that we picked intelligent as our augment, but... No, empathy was our augment, so reasoning. Uh, so, we can do any of these three. This is which one gets some singing. We will get... Did we, did we do the engineering class yet? Yeah, we did an engineering class. So, we did one of these. We get engineering and reasoning from here. We okay. get biology and reasoning here. And we get creativity and persuasion here. How is the persuasion? Our persuasion is at 21 because we have, we put something on there to make our persuasion better. Mm. So we got, technically we got a perk. Eh, let's just do more uh, engineering, I guess. Okay. Hi, kids. The ship's onboard intelligence congruence glides into the room on her ceiling track and the class cheers. Congruence is so cool. She's like a person, but also a machine. And she knows a lot of AI. jokes and can tell you anything about space. She never so gets she bored or frustrated. <laughs> yeah, she never gets bored or frustrated by your questions. You all know me, she says. But I bet some of you have questions about how I work. What do you want to know? Chinese food. <laughs> how do you know so many things? What's your job? Do you have to eat and poop? Or shut up and listen. We could do the Monkey D. Luffy question. Why are you doing this? I. Why are you doing this? I didn't. Why must you? Why, I didn't. Why, I didn't say that we were going to do it. I just said that that that's basically what it is. So uh, let's pick the first one. How do you know so many things? Okay. Oh, so we can do all of them. My brain is big, she explains. It's just enormous, really. Much bigger than the little monitor you see here. And it's connected to the ship's holonet, so anything you can look up on your holopomps, I just know. What's your job? Well, right now, part of me is showing animal videos to the children in the creech, and part of me is teaching you. But most of me is monitoring the engines which give us power, and the life support systems that make it comfortable in here. So doesn't that mean if she shut down, the whole thing shuts down? I think so. Uh, is it just basically, um, what's that thing? Horizon Zero Dawn situation that a you know, Aloy had to go find a Gaia backup. And then it's like when Gaia shut down, the whole world is fucked. <laughs> um, All right. Do you have to eat and poop? 
She laughs, which has never sounded quite the same as a real person's laugh to you. I guess you could say I eat electricity, but not in the same way you get energy from food. But no, I've never pooped. I think it sounds kind of neat, actually. Because she, because you know, having yeah. a body. Just listen. No, why don't you have an android body then? Why, 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 don't, why don't they create an android body for her? Well, the thing is, she is a, she is an AI, and there's, like, one of the biggest fears, especially like in sci-fi, is your AI going rogue. Mm. And so especially you since keep she, them the computer? yeah, especially since she's in charge of so much. To but she them. can be like in Code Lyoko. Apparently, that didn't work. But think if it, if she did have something that was like Code Lyoko, would you think that she would want to stop? being an AI and want to be more human and basically neglect her duties because right now she's holding fast the nuclear power and if she neglects the nuclear power that could end up having a nuclear meltdown and kill everybody there Touché. yeah Touché. Touché. congrats explains that she had to do all kinds of calculations to help fly the ship and land it and that she was designed to provide user-friendly interface for the ship's systems. But Hal has modded me to be far more than that, she says proudly. Now I can even tell jokes. Why did the computer cross the road, she asks. I don't know. Data. Why? I'm there. I'm there. I need someone to explain that because I know this is binary. Well, can you it's... copy paste? Uh, no. I know this is binary, and each one stands for a letter, uh -huh. and yeah, someone's going to know what that joke is, but no. But l let's just do some dry sciences. Oops. You know what? Oh, it became a plus two if it was in the last panel. Four, five. Well, oh, that worked. Early dust. Okay, it's early dust, so it's nice and hot. We'll see who wants to talk, and then we'll pretty much just end it here. Okay? Okay. So let's... Oop. I didn't mean to press Dad. Oh, did, wasn't there dice that you saw? Yeah. Also, oh, found dear. the yellow flower, so Go you can... give it to freaking Tammy. I know. Because we know Tammy like yellow. Go have your flower. And it's plus two friendship with you. How, how's your friendship now? Where's Tammy? Oh, oh wow. We're up we're at thirty-three and we have more <laughs> friendship with Tammy than Mars. I'm surprised now. about dice. We got two hearts. We're at twenty two. So each heart is ten. So we have the least amount with the nemine. Okay, so well, we have enough to give everybody. What? I got a hollow leg. Okay, so what do you think she would go for? A mushwood log? Or medicinal roots? Because we got a bunch of medicinal roots. But I think tangent might like those. Didn't she like worms? That is true. She did say that Tangent likes worms. Uh, where's Dice? I'm going to give him... You're getting some additional roots, man. Why would you give him additional roots? Because because we got to give him something. He likes creatures. I know. <gasps> wow! Oh, he wow. says uncharacteristically excited about the roots. They're so colorful. I've never seen roots like these before. What kind of plant are those? So he's from? an herbologist? And we found what dice like. Okay then. So does it, wait, check the friend thingy then. Yeah, we don't have enough to tell mom what we like. 
Organizing. It was organizing. Or, organizing. 17. Did you, she had a stroke again? Okay, no, go, I, go, I go forgot where it was. Go, go to work then, because then we were almost at 20. Okay. We're going to have to deal with you. What's this, how, Let's how see. Much? Delivering is organizing, and then organizing, persuasion, friendship with Mars, What's and kudos. Organizing and perception, friendship with Mars, and five kudos. We get more kudos if we work. Okay, go with Mars, Mars, wherever that English. Work in the depot with Mars? Mm -hmm. Seek rolls their eyes when they see you report to the depot for your first day as a clerk. Oh, it's you, the deadpan. Well, at least you might learn something useful while you're here. The depot is where the precious nano prayer lives. Seek lords over it like a tyrant, and they don't like children. They load the depot module on your home. I am sorry for your parents. On your hollow palm and walk you through the process. I am sorry for your parents. People submit requisitions for the nanoprinter through this portal. They explain, it's your job to program the correct routine into the nanoprinter to fulfill their order. Then you mark it as available for delivery or pickup, depending on if we have a delivery person available. Seek grumbles, and we almost never do. Hey, I'm doing my best. I'm your delivery person. If you want me to do both jobs, you better pay me double the, you better pay me that price. 15, 20 kudos all together. I'll do the printing. I'll go ahead and deliver. Heck, I will kiss your ass. I am done with you. Stop being a bitch. I am done with you. With that perfunctionary explanation, Seek leaves you to figure out what to do on your own. You're okay for the first hour or so because no one puts in a requisition at all. It is pretty early. Maybe everyone is still asleep. Clean and organize. No shit. There isn't a lot to organize, but we got the organization thing. Plus As get, you don't store a lot of stuff here, except for things that people need all the time, like toothpaste. But you find a bucket and start to mop the floors the old fashioned way because there's nothing wrong with taking pride in your work. You're jerked back into reality by a haptic pulse through your hollow palm. Your first order. You excitedly open your hollow palm and read, elbow grease. One gallon, it reads, from cow. Ooh! Ooh! And we won. Uh, <sighs> we're gonna do something stupid! Fill it! Or, yeah, we understand that this is stupid. We don't understand that it's stupid. We were one reasoning off. One. Can we restart? <laughs> What's the current time? <laughs> really? You're going to sit here and say that we got to restart. <sighs> Do you want the funny hee-haws or more trouble? <sighs> Let's see what, what the last one was because we are in dust. Okay, so save right now, and then like, and then like, uh, we have we have extra strength, so Christ is too far right. We're gonna go to forty six. No, 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 wait, uh, no, I'm saying save, and then go back because we don't know how far back we're going. We're only going a few minutes because it's fifty two right now. Okay. Because double zero is midnight, so going back to forty six. Okay. Okay. Load that. Yes, load the game. So we went back and now we're gonna have to oh you're right there let's go ahead and give you the gift again because we found out you like these what's the, what's the like points now uh, right here 24. Hmm. oh Kay. mars and tam the tam are getting higher yeah Mars and Tammy's are the highest. So we need reasoning. Reasoning is from... School. Yes. Because we got to do... You're so excited. Shit, god damn you. Right here. Mm -hmm. So, like, which is the last one? Or we can do two reasoning from engineering. Okay. For engineering it is. And it's time for the third annual Ventrimalia Festival. You gather with your family in the Colony Square. Everyone takes a seat as Governor Unicott approaches to the stage. She folds her hands and serenely addresses the crowd. What a pleasure to address you all today as your governor. 
she says looking as pleased as she ever does. In under three years, we built a colony of which we can truly be proud. While we suffered hardships and losses, we remain standing, as always, looking forward to the future we are building together. Let us use this Midsummer Festival as a time to reflect on our many blessings, Utica continues. Fresh water, good food, healthy children, and a strong community. You look at the crowd, your friends, your parents, and the other adults who have been in the background, been the background radiation your entire life. These are the closest human beings around for light years, and they're all your family. I'd like to formally recognize our youngest council member ever, Utopia, representing Expeditions. Utica gestures for Utopia and Uncle Tonin to join her on stage. Thank you, Melatonin, for your years of service as head of Expeditions. I, I literally seen freaking pop my sheep. Yeah. Tonin gives Utopia shoulder a squeeze. Utopia's been ready for this since we landed. I'll be staying back to work the comms from here. So I'm always a call away if you need me. Utica invites the rest of the council to stand and be recognized among the crowd, including your mom who huffs in annoyance. And look, her her leg is robotic. Mm -hmm. So I was right, that is isn't amputated. Cool. Yeah, she lost a leg. When the applause dies down and the comps and the council sits. Utopia remains standing. Actually, Auntie Uticot, y'all mind if I just make a quick announcement? Auntie what is hot? She called Governor Uticot Auntie. Is that her relative or just a title? Like, um, with some countries, calling someone uncle and auntie is a sign of respect, like calling someone Mr. or Mrs. Mm. So even if they're not related to you, those are your aunties and uncles. Mm. Utica nods as Utopia clears her throat. I just wanted to say thanks to y'all who are trusting me with this job. She says, her clear voice ringing out over the crowd. A cheer rises from expeditions, and she motions for them to quiet down. Uncle Tony's left some big shoes to fill, and well, I'm going to give it my best. We're fixing to get to the bottom of what we're calling the shimmer. The sniffles folks been getting during pollen. Utopia continues, until we do, please keep wearing your mask when the pollen is thick and let the dog know if you're under the weather. She bends down and hugs the governor I'm as done. she leaves and leaves the stage. Thank you, Utopia, Utica says warmly. And thank you for the rest of the council of their service, live music plays, and... I'm done. Yeah. 15 creativity, what is our creativity? Probably not that much. 13. Literally 2.5 again. Let's do the bot triathlon. The calm keeps adding complexity to the bot wrestling game. Last year was the hollow obstacle course. This year is accuracy challenge. Sink three baskets and you can move on to the next stage, calm says, unveiling something with a flourish. A vacuum bot with a basket tied to his head. It chirps and stomps back and forth and the crowd cheers. Mm -hmm. Okay, two with cow, two anemone. Normal difficulty. Okay. Oh, that's locked. <gasps> <sighs> you know what? Let's just try to get something good. It's you. This is everything about strength. Are you sure? Okay, you want to do it? No, I'm saying like, because it says plus one on strength. Um, I mean, the plus one on a skill for intelligence. Eight. Yeah. I'm so really I'm, I'm just trying to see like what I can do. Because this kind of screws me because it drops everything to a plus one. What kind of cock out card is that? So, no matter what, it's still a plus seven. And you only have three rounds. Yeah. Plus nine. So, so it jumps a plus one skill. Again, throw them cards out. Yeah. I've been, I really do need to start moving these. Okay, so this, we'll just keep that as a plus one. And then... That's better. 
Mm. <sighs> Next round. Okay. Okay, you got fives and fours. Yep. So five, four, two, one. Okay, no. So. Don't forget, you can still stress it. It'll just have I know. You get the cheapest out of it. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying to see what I can do. Before I before I do any of that, okay, that jumps into a plus fifteen, and that's a plus seventeen. What was it before, like plus eighteen, nineteen, or whatever? Let's see. Or thirteen. Or plus 16. sixteen. So seventeen. So yeah, we're gonna have to push through with stress. So okay, so, so do plus seventeen, get the highest, and then do stress. Okay, five points down. That's better. Push through with stress, but that's a cop out. So we only get one store. I mean, majority of the thing is easier. More sorry anyway. Yeah. You thought the accuracy portion would be harder. Those vacuum bots can be fast when they're on a mission. This one seems to get bored waiting for you to complete the obstacle course. So by the time you line up to take your shots with the sports ball, it stopped running around and has taken to carefully vacuuming dirt under its feet. What did you say? Empathy is higher? What? The, 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 bu the buff. Popular. No, see? Yeah, kudos has doubled. Mm. So working with Mars. Alright. And All right. then it dropped the stress back down because of festivities. So then uh, go, go do, do the thing with Mars. Okay. First, let's see if anyone wants to talk, if anyone wants to chat. Nobody wants to chit chat. So Wait, can you, can't you give him more medicinal things? Because it's been yes. In case we can chat. give it to Tammy and the dice. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, we can't. Too man. soon. So we on, we can only do it once per season, I guess. Okay, so probably go to Tammy so and see. I'm just curious to see if we can with Tammy. Right, okay. Little. So yeah, we can do Tammy. Okay, then go to Mars and do the thingy. We gotta find out what she wants, though. Okay, mm -hmm. work in the depot. Mm. You, shut up. You, shut up. Clean and organize. Taking part in the work. Alright. Tell her he he take out. Yeah, very funny. You do miss... Another one pops up, flashlight fluid, two gallons, and anemone, sports ball delivery. Hey, we need 15. Uh-huh. Are you so glad we went ahead and, and, and tried to do all of that? All that well, all we can do is just fill it. Mm -hmm. There must be something wrong because you're not finding anything under... You're about to punch in the parameters for something similar. OMG, Mars explains, leaning over his shoulder to look at your hollow palm. Are you serious? Are you kidding me right now? Like Solana, that's not even a thing. She snaps her gum in your ear as she reaches over and dismisses the requisition. Here, I saved you from being a nullhead today. Now you owe me one. I take payment and acts of service. And you're chewing your gum in my ear. Organizing 20 or greater. <sighs> She hops up to the depot counter and primarily crosses her legs. I am so totally relieved to have you as my assistant. I refuse. Solana. I refuse to say that sounds good. I want to smack her. <laughs> Why are we always two points off? We're sharing everything? responsibilities, woman. Oh, my God. I don't care which one of you is in charge. Seek interrupts as long as you get the work done. Seek pauses. Wait, did you wash the floors? They say looking impressed. Well, that does deserve a reward. There you go. They swipe their holly palm and you can feel your pulse a cup as a couple of kudos so are deposited it, into your account. Does that mean they embed something in their hands when they're young? Yeah, so it's like, I guess it's just like a little hollow projector either on the palm or like right on the wrist. Probably on the palm. Mars can hardly wait until Seek is gone to giggle. Either way, I'm glad you're here. This job is usually so boring. Okay, so we pick the neutral option. <sighs> All right. 
two, 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 four, five. Because okay. same colors get something, same numbers get something, same colors get something. Ah. <sighs> There we go. Now we have the. Okay, so give creativity because this is just sad. This is absolutely sad. Oh, Mars wants to talk. Oh. Mars is watching a vid from Earth on her holo palm. She gestures you over, and you sync your holo palm with hers. The holo track comes through your hear speak. Mars knows every word. Besides you, she recites the dialogue perfectly along with the actors. Since the day we met, I've devoted my life to finding you. I searched every train station, every coffee shop, every museum and park for you, she says. My every waking thought is only of you. Her voice goes higher. I dreamed of you, she says. Every night, my heart called to yours in the dark. I dreamed of you, Gucci bag. Bro, I will not be surprised. Gucci bag. Louis Vuitton's. I'm here now, she says, playing the first part again. I'm here, and I'm never leaving your side again. She Look at my poems that cost $800. She drags her hand down her face as the couple in the vid kiss passionately. Ugh, she exclaims. I've seen this vid a hundred times, and the end always makes me want to yarts. They met on a train once and spent forever looking for each other. Like, move on, you know? It's not like living here where there's only a hundred people to pick from. You're in a huge city. Go find anyone else. Why do you keep watching it? Exactly. I've already seen everything else worth watching. Oh, that means you need some new entertainment. Before you can protest, she holds up a hand. Okay, fine. I do like the city parts. Like, it isn't post-real to imagine cities so big you could get lost in them. So many people that you can meet someone and then never see them again in your life. Mars waves away the vid screen. Sometimes I think I should have been born back on Earth, not on this dumb spaceship. She mock punches the hole of the ship behind her. All those Ugh. cities and people and the stuff you could do. Watch she would be a part of Scream Queen. <laughs> watching new vids, going to concerts. The only culture here is grown in a lab. She sighs dreamily and the shopping. They have so much stuff on Earth. Anything you could dream. Wasn't just she just rubbish. roasting Earth a few moments ago? <laughs> what did she say? Ah, look at the place we live in and blah, blah, blah. I'm blah. bored of everything I own, Mars complains. Speaking of shopping, do you want to trade some kudos for one of my old jackets? My dad says I can't print more stuff until I get rid of something. I say 50 kudos for it. Sounds fair? What is it? What is it? Plus 20 for oh. 20 persuasion? Jesus Christ. But yeah. Hell yeah. Because we already have a persuasion thing. We got a better one. Yep. What is that? What does it say? It's stress? What is that? The, the, the thumbs down. Oh, that's my kudos. Uh, I gave her kudos. Uh, oh, she took off the jacket. I'm good. Well, it matches your hair, she says. But it kind of puckers at the shoulders. It was really tailor printed to fit me. She okay. almost looks like she's going to take it back for a second before putting her hands up in surrender. No, I admit it. It looks good on you. It makes you look posh. She would definitely be that frat queen, a diva. Okay, what were you... From the elite society with two dads. What was it that you were saying that we needed to do now? Uh, switch the perk. Oh, switch the perk. I didn't get creativity, basically. Uh, gear... Five... Two bonus. Okay, there we go. Okay, well, wait. Um, now, I have... Go to your main cards. Memories? Can't you delete them? No. Because, like, the only time I can delete oh, them is if I... Oh, it's the spa. Is, yeah, if I memories. take time off. Take time off and the spa. Yeah. the spa, you can delete them. Okay, so if we want to get stress, stress quickly, we can go outside with dice. No, you can go to the spa directly to delete your cards. Because remember, they get the, it's either you actually naturally or you can go to the spa. Okay. I remember him saying that. Like, see, visit the spa. You can right. delete your cards. Oh, this is like basically how yeah, you we... get your money back. Okay, 50. Uh, I'm going to at least keep one of the. I think you have to do one by one. Uh, really? That's annoying. 50. You can't forget this. I'm oh, we have to pay to forget. 
So we can't forget. So and the thing is, remember every time you do the stress thing, and then, I mean, like when the stress get high, and then you go do the thing, yeah, it's randomized. Then, it's not yep. you can't choose it. So so if anything, all we can do is get stressed and go and hope for the best. I said get creativity. What are you? Why are you going outside for? This girl just go. I'm gonna go outside. And you were saying that we need to get rid of some of the cards. So like the only way we can get rid of the cards is to get super stressed and then take the stress away. I mean, yes, but the thing is you forget, the cards are randomized. That's true, but uh, either way. Either I mean, we don't got no creativity, we don't got no combat nothing, we just dookie. Well, we do get to learn a little bit more combat skills if we actually go outside though. That's the sad part. What's this? Are you I see something on top of a nearby mushroom tree. Can't quite tell, but is that a person? Is that are you talking about that weird mysterious person again? Yep. Someone is peering over the edge of the mushroom cap above you. You can't quite see their eyes, but you get an impression of a long dark hair and an enormous mocking grin. I wouldn't go that way if I were you. They warn playfully. They have a deep musical accent you don't rec recognize, not recognize. A stranger? It's impossible. You're the only people around for thousands of light years. What the heck is he doing out here? You feel a chill go up your spine. Ignore him and move or find another way. What does he mean by finding another way? Find another route. Because they're saying that we shouldn't go this way. Okay, I guess we find another route. Yeah. Wait, why is that question still there? Because we... All we did was like say we're going another way. If we ignore No, you think he's gone now. Why not? You remember the warning though. Are you sure you want to go this way? Uh, okay, go find another way. So we're gonna have to keep walking. Wait. Herbal medicine for dice. Should we click see what this is? Yeah. Oh. I know what that one was and it sucked. What is that? Because all it is is like, hey, do you want to just sit there and watch them do this? Are you? <sighs> what? watermelon uh nice and sweet like a solid potato pod you much waste spinning the seeds practice spitting well i was about to say just relax so you can just... <sighs> have to go all the way around like a damn idiot nearby pond is dammed up and washed out the path path continues on the other side let's it's easy briefly jump over One, two, three. Too bad we don't have four and five. Oh. <sighs> Hate you. Four, five, five. What the heck is that picture? Huh? What the heck is that picture? Uh, this is from Anemone telling a violent tale of how her brother broke someone's nose. Okay, zero, zero, one, two, four. Use all of them and get some super gold. You, f you briefly fall in and get wet. You flounder to the other side, self but victorious. But what is the, what was that thing, uh, the buff on it after the sad face? <gasps> oh, it's this little guy again. First of all, give me this. And now we play with him. It's the Unisaur. You've seen them before, but they still fill you with a sense of awe. Be as quiet as possible because they actually drop your stress down. Okay. 
plus two if this is the last one. Plus two and plus two, right? That gives me 10. And then zero, one, two, two. And then everything else is just literally, you know what, five, four, four, and then it does that. Nope, you're staying right here. Because it drops, that one drops everything to one. You settle in and watch it from behind a strand of mush trees. The Unisar looks up towards you. Startled by your movement, you try to hold perfectly still and quiet your breathing. After a tense moment, it goes back to business. First, it sniffs the ground for trees and rubs its scent glands. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the same thing that we saw last time. And it drops our stress pretty good. So seeing him helps. Where are you trying to go? I don't know. I just wanted to see how far we could go. You let your mind wander as you're walking and bumble straight into a field of gelatinous blob grass. Totally transparent and sticky fronds are hard to see but even harder to ignore, especially once they start glomming on your boots and slowing you down. It's like trudging through thick mud. You stubbornly decide to keep going, paying close attention to the visible signs of blob grass of this blob grass field. There aren't many, just an absence of other vegetation. And this is still supposed to be easy. So that plus one minus one just cancels to make that. And then zero, zero, one, two. Hopefully, okay. You stay put. Two, three, four, five. There it is. You can hop along that rock to that fallen log, then climb over those old pieces of surveying equipment. Where's those, the, the muscle? Which one is that? Oh, perception. Because now our perception yeah, is at 23. Man. And our toughness is at 21. Our combat is still weak, but our animals are at 11. So we're actually doing good at getting a good amount of toughness. Well, like, like our creativity is, is down, but our like our reasoning and engineering, like all of this more or less can be fixed in class. You spend a bunch of time on it though. It takes some tricky balancing. It's tiring. Time passes, but we're still okay. Get another one of these. Mushwood log. Let's see, what's this? Path and Ghost by Dust Tornado. We know this one. And that one's another goal of 27. Three, two, one. Because you make everything to a one. Okay. Let's see, zero, 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 and nope, that's not gonna work. Well, this is a muscle challenge, right? Or no perception, perception. But that's technically a muscle challenge. I'm trying to see like how much I can get. Plus 60 stress if we have to push through. Let's see, zero, zero, two, four, five. Okay. And only, oh, plus one stress, but it's gonna be like another 13. Oh, 
You shut your eyes hard against the swirling dust and somehow manage to straight walk straight through it. Once you pass through the through and turn, the dust settles. Not sure if walking through it somehow made it die down under the hot sun. Let's see. Yeah. Because we could have went here. Minding your own business when you stumble into. It's so hot. The two suns are beating down on you. The ground is cracked and parched, and so are you. Ahead is a long stretch with no trees, just merciless heat of the sun scorching the ground. Look for a shady route. It's another 27. Plus one. Camping outside. Unchangeable. One and three, just to get those out of the way. So we're gonna put that. Four, five, four, two. No, back here. If anything, I just like the fact that I can get a super goal. Let's see, spend some time going the long way around, taking shelter in some mush trees. It's still sweltering in the shade, but not as bad. You're too worn out to continue. You have to go home. And we got plus one friendship with dice just for doing that. But now we are stressed. But now we can... New perk. Extra card. Well, we might as well spend the, 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 the thing of dice. Okay, let's see. Unlocked. Needed. Oh, card. that means we can give the presents. Oh, that's true. We can go ahead and give presents again. Uh. Dice. Here's some roots for you. Who would like the mush? Much longer is Tangent. Tangent? Though we gave one to her and she didn't really care. Yeah, but she still gave her heart give you hearts though. Okay. Did it? Okay. But regardless if we give them a present, it'll still give us hearts. No, remember they get that. Remember, if you give them presents and it's the one that dislike, they will decrease. True, but most, more or less, they can be indifferent to it. See, because we don't know her likes. So it's neutral, basically. Yes. What cow? We know bobber fruits and cakes is what he wants, and he's fourteen Show right me. now. Uh, and we know dice likes medicinal roots, but he doesn't like cake. With Tanny, we know she likes yellow flowers. So if we gave her the law, we'd probably start going into the negatives with her. But we don't know anything about Mars' stuff. And then Anemone, we just know that she has that. So honestly, my question is, if we give the log to her, what will she do with it? Because we've got two of them. Neutral. Yeah. Okay, you said we needed our creativity up? No, you stressed out. Oh, that's right. No, you, I, you forget, you can go on a thing with dice. Oh, right. Exactly. Where was that? Go it's to the, the garrison? Yeah. Okay. You are really liking that we have some, have because some leeway with dice. He's a, he's a weird child. True. Well, everybody, we can pinpoint like what it is, except for Mars. <laughs> You relax on the walls again this month. Compared to the hustle and bustle of the colony down below, it's pretty boring up here. You look through some of the independent study modules and catch up on some schoolwork. Hopefully when you go to class again, you'll be a little smarter than before. And if not, at least a little less stressed. So we didn't get to talk with him. So yeah. We'll keep those cards. We have to pay to forget. Mid wet. Yeah, you can stop here. Yeah. 